Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to add new records on the top of a continuous form instead of the bottom in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from David from Woodbridge, Virginia, one of my gold members. He posted this in the forum earlier today. It says, I have a continuous form which sorts records by date with the most recent entries at the top. I have a button that allows me to add a new record, but it adds it at the bottom. Is there a way to add the new record at the top of the form? Well, David, there's no setting that lets you change that. That's just a default behavior of Access. That's how Access was built. That's how continuous forms work. But with a little trickery, we can get that new record to appear at the top of the form off the bat, and then you can fill in the details. Let me show you how to do it. Before we get started, there's two videos I'd like you to watch first. Continuous forms. If you don't know what continuous forms are, those are the forms you can have multiple records on the screen at a time, kind of like a list. And watch my intro to VBA video. We're going to need like four or five lines of VBA code. VBA is not scary. It's easy. I'll show you everything you need to know, but go watch intro to VBA first. It's like 20 minutes long. It'll walk you through all the basics. Uh, once you learn a little tiny bit of VBA, your access database has become so much more powerful. So go watch this first, then come back here. Go on, go do it, go watch it. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can go grab a copy off my website if you want to. You'll find a link to get this in the links section down below the video. So go click on that, get a copy of this database or use whatever database you want. Now in this database, I've got a customer list, which is a continuous form. You can see there's one record, there's two records, there's three records and so on. Okay, now what David is saying is he wants to add a new record at the top of this list. All right, because he's got this list sorted by the uh, the the date the record was added. So let's let's pretend this customer sends is the 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 field that I want to sort on. So let's design this guy. Let's open up the properties for this form. Go to data, and I want to find order by. Order by is the field that we're going to sort by. Okay, the order by. And we're going to change this to, what's the field name? Customer sense. But I don't want it in ascending order. I want it in descending order. So it's D-E-S-C. Okay. Customer sense descending means that this form is going to sort this list by customer sense descending. So the newest records will show up at top. And make sure you have order by on load set to yes. If you turn that off, then the order is still saved in the form, but you have to manually turn it on every time you open the form, which we don't want to do. So save that. Let's close this and reopen it again. And now you'll see the most recent records are at the top. Yeah, these are pretty old, but oh well. These are customer sent, so it's supposed to be you know, years in the past. But if you add a new date in here, like if I put today's date in there, okay, if I close this form and then reopen it, you'll see that record is now up top. Okay. Now, access databases by default are designed to add the new record at the bottom. That's just how they work. Okay, and you can hit the little add button down here and it'll bring you down to the bottom. But if you've got 5,000 records in here, it's going to bring you all the way to the bottom. Okay, you might want to just have it so it pops a new record and up at the top. So what we're essentially going to do is we're going to make our own add button. It's going to go to a new record. It's going to add the date in there. Because once you add any bit of information into this record, it creates the new record. So it'll go to the new record. It'll put today's date in there. Okay, it'll save the record and then requery the list. And when that happens, it's basically the same thing as if you close that and reopen it. Now you'll be here on the first record. So just hit the button and all that'll happen in the background. All right, so let's see how we do that. We're gonna need a little tiny bit of VBA. So I'm gonna open up my design view here. Let's go to form design. In the control box here, find a little button. Click and drop that right there. Now the wizard's gonna start up. Now there is an option under record operations to add a new record, but I don't wanna use this wizard because this wizard creates macros and I, I kinda hate macros. So I'm gonna cancel that. We're gonna put some VBA in this button. Let's change the caption so it says add new. Okay. And bring up the properties for this button. So over here, all right, double click on it, bring up the properties. Go to all. First thing I'm gonna do is give this button a good name. I don't like command 17. So we'll go add new BTN for button. Okay. And now I'm gonna right click on that button, go to build event. Your VBA editor will start up. You may get a window asking what builder you want. Pick the code builder. If you watched my intro to VBA video that I told you to watch, you'd know all about that. So now right in here, I can put in the code that's gonna happen whenever I click on this button. So what's the first thing I wanna do? First thing I wanna do is go to a new record. So that's gonna be do command dot go to record. 
Now, the, the next couple things we can just ignore, we can use the default values because the defaults there are active data object. We can just hit comma and then object name comma. It's going to basically assume whatever you're on as the default object. So the form that we're on, for example, you don't have to specify the commands there. But this one we do need. So we're going to go AC new rec. And that's it. That's all we need. That's all. When we click the button, it's going to go to a new record on the current form. All right. So let's save it. Make sure it works. Save it. Close it. All right. Open the list back up and hit add new. Boop. And there it goes. It's all we told to do so far, right? Go to a new record. Now that I'm down here, okay, I want to fill in that date automatically or, or any one of these fields, really. It doesn't matter. But the date's the easiest one. All right. So back to our code window. Right here, we're going to say customer. Whoops. I can't type today. Customer sense. That's the name of the field equals now. All right. Put the current date and time in there. All right. Save it. Come back over here. Let's test it. Make sure it works. I'm going to close the form, reopen it, and click. And there we go. Now, the field's too narrow. So let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see the whole thing. In fact, uh, we can probably get rid of credit limit. We don't need that on here. We'll just do this. And while I'm at it, I'll get rid of state too. Okay. All we need is first name, last name, and customer sense for this example. Save it. Close it. Open it back up. And there we go. There's our blank new record at the top with the current date and time in it. Okay. Now, when you when you click the button, it goes to the new record and it adds it at the bottom. So I need to requery this so that it shows up at top for me. So what we're going to do is get rid of that. We're going to delete that record. Go back in here. All right. After I set that value, I'm going to say me.requery. That's going to requery the records in this form. All right. Save it. Come back out here. I'm going to close it. Reopen it again. Ready? Add new. Boom. And there we go. Look at that. It went to a new record, added the customer sense in there, which creates a new record, brings me back up to the top after it requeries it because it's sorted by the customer sense date. All right. Now, I don't want to be sitting in the ID field. How to be, it'd be nice if I would just went there, right? So I could just start typing in the first name. So how do we do that? Well, there's another command called go to control. Do command dot go to control. All right. And it's going to be what is the name of it? First name. Just like that. All right, so go to a new record, set the time and date, requery, and then go to the first name field. All right, let's try it. Let me get rid of this record right there and close it. Save changes, sure. Open it back up again and add new. Boop. And there we go. Look at that. It added the new record, set the time, requeried it, and put me right sitting there on the first name so I can just type in Joe Smith. Isn't that nice? You can also set this button as the default button. What the default button is, is if you press enter on the keyboard, it's the same as if you press that button. So I can go like this, design view, go to here, go to the other tab, find default and set that to yes. There's also cancel. Cancel means if you hit escape on the keyboard, it's the same as pushing that button. All right, that's good for like a, a, you know, like a close button or something. All right, so save it. And now we can just do this, watch. I can press enter. It's like pushing that button, right? Amy Jones, enter, Sue Small, enter, right? Jim Kirk, enter, see? How nice and easy that is now? Made that the enter key button, all right? So yeah, as you can see, with a little tiny bit of programming, well, we got four lines of code in there, that's it, that's all you need. You learn those couple little commands and you make your databases so much more powerful and user-friendly and easy to work with. And you can do little cool things like this. Now, one major problem that I have with this is that there's nothing to stop someone from doing this, <laughs> right? Click, 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 add a bunch of empty records. So there's not a whole lot you can do to get around that because in order to do the method that I'm doing, you have to go to a new record, set a value here, and then jump back up to the top. So if you want to make first name and last name required fields, this technique won't work. So you'll need something else. So what I'm going to show you how to do in the extended cut for the members is instead of jumping to a new record, we're going to have some unbound fields up here and we can put values in up top here. I could put in Joe and then Smith here. And then if I press enter, it can yell at me and say, I'm missing data. It can do validation and check these fields before they're even added to the table. Okay. Uh, you could do something like this. You could check to see if Joe Smith's already in there with a little D lookup. Okay. So if I type in Amy small, from New York and a credit limit of 500, I press enter, boom, and she gets added automatically. All right, we'll do that with a little SQL. A little bit more programming, 
but it's a, it's a lot more elegant because you can do data validation before the record's ever added to the table. And again, I will cover this in the extended cut for the members. And again, silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos, and there's well over 200 of them now, and gold members can download these databases. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the Show More link down below the video to find additional resources and links You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.